Each year, the graduating class chooses one of their teachers to give the faculty address. This year's faculty speaker came to Robert College in 1998 and since then has built a well-deserved reputation for classes that are masterpieces of meticulous preparation, intellectual challenge, and sheer showmanship. It's a tribute to him that his students have chosen him for this honor, and I am delighted to invite Philip G. to come forward. for advice and he told me he said just be yourself <laughs> and I asked Miss Kelly for advice and she said just be yourself but then I asked Mr. Esposito for advice and he said whatever you do don't be funny, <laughs> don't be funny. and I asked Miss Stanley for advice and she said to me if you say that I'll walk out of the graduation ceremony so this evening, I won't say that, I'll try to be myself, and I'll try to be serious. The problem is I can't be serious. I can't be myself and be serious. So I'm confused. Scott Fitzgerald said that the test of a first-rate intelligence is the ability to hold two opposed ideas in the mind at the same time and still retain the ability to function. And that encouraged me to be serious. It encouraged me about being myself and being serious at the same time. But then I remembered what George Orwell, he called it double think, and he saw it as a very negative quality. <laughs> So I turn to my favourite poet, Philip Larkin, for help. He said in a poem called This Be The Verse, which I think some of you might know, he said something about your parents. I can't quite remember the exact words, but he said something like this. They, they, they mess you up, <laughs> your mum and dad. They may not mean to, but they do. They fill you with the faults they have and add some extra just for you. I believed this when I was younger, but now I know it's not true. Or at least I can hold two opposed ideas in the mind at the same time and still function. <coughs> got to remember your parents have helped you through five very long and harsh years according to one young man in the audience tonight and you should remember that this is your parents big day too so here's my first serious advice think about your parents today extra carefully number two try to function when you have to deal with two opposed ideas in your mind and <laughs> and don't believe anything Philip Larkin tells you. <laughs> don't believe anything Philip G tells you. <laughs> don't even believe anything William Shakespeare tells you. You've heard of Shakespeare, haven't you? <laughs> this is something that Matt Beth said. Have you heard of Matt Beth? <laughs> Have you read Matt Beth? <laughs> I'll test you in a few minutes. <laughs> Matt Beth said, <clears throat> Life. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts, frets his hour upon the stage, and then he's heard no more. It's a tale told by an idiot. 
full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. A tale told by an idiot. Shakespeare, you've got to remember, Shakespeare was very depressed when he wrote that. His son, his son had died, and you have to remember that Macbeth, his wife had just committed suicide at that point, and he, he's aware that in a few more, in a very short time, he's going to be killed as well. So it's not a true picture of life. You can forget what Shakespeare said. You can forget everything Shakespeare said. I'm sure quite a lot, a lot of you already have. <laughs> Don't be afraid to say that Shakespeare got things wrong, just like Philip Larkin. He got things wrong. Shakespeare was wrong because there is much more to your life than simply strutting or worrying. And your life is very, very significant. It's very important to a lot of people. Just look around you tonight. Your family, your friends, your teachers, they're all here tonight because you're very important. You're significant. I even came all the way up that hill <laughs> just to talk to you tonight. I put on a suit. Just to talk to you, I went for pink. Just to talk to you tonight. Uh, I think the advice I'm trying to give you is that you should practice not what George Orwell called double think, but what George Orwell called thought crime. And thought crime is really just looking at things from more than one angle and not being blinded by what, what you're expected to believe. Uh, a very great sociologist called C. Wright Mills said two things which I think about almost every day. He said that you should be, be one mind that's on its own confronting the problems of the individual and the society. He meant that you should do your own thinking about things, think hard about things, don't just accept what you're told. And he said the best way to do this was often you get the best insights by considering extremes, by thinking of the opposite. And I've always tried to think about things and not just accept what I've been told. And looking at opposite, op opposites helps you do this. Uh, I think I've tried to give you some examples of thinking in opposites. So, more advice. Think in opposites, consider extremes, be a little bit sceptical about what people tell you, and sapere audi. That's Latin. Sapere audi. And it means dare to be wise. Dare to be wise. I've done some mathematics for you. You won't be able to do this without your calculators. You can try. Okay, here's the maths test. Multiply 5 by 36 by 40. 8,000. 5 by 36 by 40. <laughs> Who were your maths teachers? <laughs> 5 years at Robert College by 36 <coughs> academic weeks by 40 lessons per week. I worked it out. That's 7,200 lessons. You could have done 7,200 lessons, but you probably missed a few. Some of you missed quite a few. So let's say at the lowest estimate, 5,000 lessons. 5,000 lessons, that's heroic. 5,000 lessons. For five years you've had to deal with getting up early in the morning and getting to school. Or even worse, waking up in the school. You can forget all that now. Now it's over. And now it's your big day. And now you're free. It's over now. Well, it's almost over. We've got the Shakespeare test. <laughs> Try this one. Tomorrow and... And... You did read it. <laughs> they did read it. See, you don't have to worry. You've got a great future in front of you. Of course you'll have some problems. New problems, because life is so uncertain. But not too many. And if you can handle 5,000 lessons at Robert College, you can handle anything. 
And the best part is that you're going to have so much fun tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Finally, this speech has been a beautiful ordeal and a terrible pleasure. Some of you will remember Mr. Derek Chase, uh, and this is what he said about you in a letter to me, and he asked me to include it in the speech. He said, I really love that class. I taught so many of them, and so many of them are, are super, super kids. Super, super kids. When you super, super kids are having the sweet thoughts about your parents tonight, I hope you also remember all the hard-working people at Robert College. Not just the teachers, all the hard-working people who've helped you through the last five years. Everybody who works at the school. Now, I'm going to tell you two secrets. I'm going to tell you how to, the secret of how to make people respect you and the secret of how to make people love you. First, the way to get people's respect is to do things on time. If you do things on time, people respect you. This is perhaps very, very good advice for, for lots of you. <laughs> the way to get people's respect is to do things on time. But the way to get people's love, especially headmasters and students, is to finish things on time. Um, I've had my five minutes of fame. Thank you for listening. This is a great day. I won't, I won't ever forget it. Uh, listen carefully now. Sizi Sebiorum. Teshek Kalea. Dane Siyakshan.